What's up, YouTube? Uh, it's been a minute since I've posted a vid. I'm still alive. Didn't sit the January examination because I didn't um, essentially, yeah, get my, my ducks in a row, but I plan on sitting the eye structure exam in July. And I did notice, as I'm sure all of you did as well, and if you hadn't, it's good you're watching this video, that there have been some big changes to the exam. And that's in, yeah, what the purpose of today's vid is. I haven't actually got uh, a sample past paper that I've recently done to share with you. I hope to do that in about a week. But I just wanted to run through some of the changes that have been incorporated as of last January's exam. And pretty much it is all around uh, sustainability. And um, yeah, it sounds like um, reading what the, the changes to the exam are, the, the ISHAC-D is kind of um, caught up with the 21st century and the role of a structural engineer in addressing the, the climate challenge and our role in society um, to essentially limit that. So I'm just going to go through um, essentially one of the past papers and just illustrate my understanding in terms of how the exam has tweaked a bit and what um, yeah, we should be thinking about slightly differently as to maybe what the expectations were for previous years. So right now I've got like the most recent exam in front of me. So this is January 2024, question one. And yeah, as I mentioned, the exam is sort of like tweaked to catch up with the 21st century. And most of the changes that um, have been incorporated into the exam and what's required of us as the candidates is around sustainability. So let's get into that. Um, firstly, you'll see, instead of just uh, building new buildings, if you're a uh, building structures engineer, uh, some of the questions are gonna be around reusing existing and repurposing existing buildings. So that's an example right here. Question one is the conversion of industrial building into apartments. So expect to see more questions like that coming in yeah in future exams and so as previously section one part a we're going to provide two distinct and viable schemes um, now i would say when you provide these two distinct and viable schemes that are both sustainable there's going to be pretty much more of an expectation in choose the in terms of your decision making criteria. Uh, I would be leaning more towards essentially just choosing which one is more sustainable, and the measure of that really is a measure of the embodied carbon of your structure. So that doesn't mean uh, provide you know one structure that is you know carbon intensive and the one that isn't. That makes the the decision sort of obvious. Uh, you still need to provide two schemes that, as is before, are technically sound, they're, they're structural, viable, they meet the design intent and the brief. Um, they both need to be sustainable and um, we need to think, and I've just got a little snip here of the uh, carbon hierarchy, so we keep this in mind. But essentially, when we're choosing between our two schemes, I would be pretty... The, the majority of my um, decision making, the weight of my decision making, I will be putting into which of the two schemes I can demonstrate is most sustainable. And the way I do that is uh, more or less um, by minimizing the amount of materials and uh, um, yeah, having an appreciation of the essentially the embodied carbon within your structure. So that's what's changed section one part a part b now this um sort of invites the the candidate to sort of challenge the brief to um, essentially find further reductions in material and thus reductions in the embodied carbon of your structure so again yeah this is a a, a slight tweak to previous um, styles of exam where we're essentially supposed to just say whether something was acceptable or describe how we would um, make a, a change, whether it be before design or after. But now this part of the section is more geared, this is section one, part B, where we're um, essentially yeah writing a letter to the client. Actually, no, pause that. It's more an email. 
that's the other thing where they've caught up with the 21st century. Um, communication, the <clears throat> ISHRAC-D panel sort of, uh, yeah, understand that um, engineers don't uh, communicate in letters these days anymore and we're more likely to communicate via email. So I think that communication piece, um, yeah, you should write the format of an email as opposed to a letter. Um, yeah, that's one thing that's probably more appropriate in this section. But on top of that, and what's more important, is yeah, the client's inviting you to suggest the way in which the, the brief could be altered to reduce material usage. So I haven't actually done that for this question, and yeah, hopefully by the end of this week, I'm gonna have a crack at this question. I'll find some time, and I'll post a video later when I can, yeah, share my thoughts and ideas, and I'd be keen to hear all of your feedback, whether you agree with me. Uh, so moving on to section two. So in terms of the, so before we go to section two, in terms of the weighting, it's still 50 marks, so that's still the same. Section two, there is a slight tweak to the marks, and hence if there's a tweak to the the marks, or the distribution of the marks within section two, you should be aware of how much time you're allowing. So part C, um, we're now expected, as you can see here, to provide some embodied carbon calcs. So I don't think these need to be super long and detailed. Um, they just need to be simple and clear and probably just for the uh, principal structural elements. But they do need to be there. And um, yeah, I might have a video at a, another day sort of like showing you how I do my embodied carbon calcs. It's essentially just going to be timesing the, the mass of your principal structural elements times an embodied carbon factor. Um, it'll be quite simple. Uh, there'll be some industry guidelines out there that we can use. Um, yeah, so a part of this will be, you know, being able to identify what your principal structural elements are for your scheme and then following up with that. Um, yeah, just a simple calc that clearly illustrates, okay, this is the mass, this is the embodied carbon factor for the, the material that I'm using here. Times those two together and you should get um, your embodied carbon and then we'll be summing those up and that will essentially, yeah, be the embodied carbon for stages A1 to A3. But yeah, that's the change there. And as a result, because we still have to provide the um, calculations as we did in prior years for the principal structural members, um, you know, looking at your bending moments, shears, uh, rule of thumb calcs, etc. Well, they've actually added a couple of marks here. So this is now 22 marks as opposed to 20 marks. Um, so we they've docked two marks off in section E. So yeah, I guess you're allowed to afford a little bit more time in question two, part C. In question two, part D, um, when you're essentially providing your sections plans, drawings, elevations and whatnot, uh, I'd say nothing there has changed. So that's identical. And then the the final part of the exam, part E, so it's now eight marks as opposed to 10, so expect to spend a bit less time here. And my understanding of this change is we're still required to provide a method statement so of, for the safe construction work of our chosen scheme. So essentially, you know, from start to end, how do we, how does our solution work? But uh, yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong here in the comments, but I'm pretty sure they're just not expecting us to provide essentially like a, a timeline, like a to capture the time for each of the, the activities. It's more just a method statement. So yeah, that's my understanding in terms of what the changes are. It's pretty much all geared to, um, yeah, catch up with the 21st century and um, make sure that, you know, as the role of the structural engineer today, that, that role has changed a bit, and this is a reflection of that. Our role in society to, um, you know, limit the embodied carbon of the structures that we design, and yeah, be be brave enough to essentially yeah challenge a brief um, when the opportunity arises. So yeah, good to get a vid out there. Please comment if you've got any questions or anything else you want to see. And hopefully in a week's time, I'll have um, yeah an example of one of the questions in this paper. Okay, thanks all.